more than just a computerized vending machine, unattended retail sees you, hears you, and offers what it knows you want. I'm Tanya Hall for ZDNet, and joining me is Maeve McKenna-Duska. She is the Senior Vice President of Marketing and Strategic Development at USA Technologies. Welcome, Maeve. Hi there. What kind of work do you do at USA Technologies? Yeah, so USA Technologies is probably one of the companies whose technology you've used and probably have not realized it. Um, we actually do the payments gateway and IoT services, so royalty, consumer engagement, um, digital content for um, what would typically be called unattended retail machines. So it could be anything from a vending machine to a commercial laundry machine um, or a kiosk that you might use to order something at a quick serve restaurant, um, car washes, electric ch car charging stations. So it's kind of everywhere, but we typically play in the B2B space, um, connecting machines that typically aren't connected. So we can enable all of those services on the back end. So define then what a uh, unattended retail machine might look like. Yeah, so traditionally um, it was a vending machine. Um, but today, fast forward, and really um, lots of different kinds of retailers are getting into unattended. And so the market itself has really expanded sort of exponentially over the last few years. So it went from traditional, um, you know, candy sort of snacks out of a vending machine to, you know, now you see very sophisticated vending type machines at airports that are um, vending electronics equipment. Um, and even a kiosk really could be like a vending machine. So if you're getting a good or service from that machine or you're purchasing something, um, that's also considered unattended. So the market is, is pretty broad um, and it's actually getting broader and accelerating faster now that everyone, all retailers are trying to do the best they can to try to simulate that online experience that everybody wants. Um, so unattended went from being um, a market that really was working hard to kind of get with the program um, on the technology side to a market that really is an enabler for a lot of retailers now that the technology is available. One of the, the pieces is that you actually implement smart inventory that remote monitors stock. Talk about how that works and why that's good for um, business owners. Yeah, so um, one of the pieces that businesses who are getting into unattended probably don't appreciate is once you have a machine out there, um, you have to manage it. And so there may be inventory requirements. Um, you need to know that the machine is up and running. Um, in addition to accepting cashless payments like mobile wallets, you also want to know how much cash is coming into the machine. You want to make sure your route drivers aren't necessarily stealing from you. Um, so the software that we have um, monitors the machine, helps you to manage your inventory. It also has some smart algorithms in it. So it takes it a step further. It's not just what's in the machine, but also monitors what the popular items are. And it can make suggestions on how to um, optimize that planogram, if you will. Um, so the, the, the algorithms that are included in the software make you not only more efficient with your business, but also makes you a better marketer and merchandiser, if that makes sense. So it's, it's, it's pretty cool. And um, until you have thousands of these machines out there that you're responsible for managing, you probably don't have a, a big appreciation for how important it becomes. How will augmented reality or virtual reality be implemented in both the traditional and the unattended retail? Yeah, so from a consumer perspective, um, what we're seeing now, which is really exciting, is um, we're able to, using things like smart glass um, on machines, uh, see how many people may be walking by. We can do um, demographic um, analyses on that. So not only are you getting some recommendations based on product that may be selling there, but you're also getting product recommendations to include in your product mix based on the demographic of people who either are buying from you or who are not buying from you that you see walking by. Um, and they're also enabling the retailers to make suggestions on the spot. So um, you know, imagine, and I think we've all seen commercials where you're, you're in the dressing room and you're kind of trying on something and you can change the color based on the smart glass. Well, now retailers are taking that to um, an unattended 
um, aspect and they're actually extending store hours. So now if you go to a store and the store is closed, you can actually potentially um, uh, interact with glass that's on the window outside the store, find your product, um, make a purchase on the window and have it shipped to you just like you would if you were purchasing something online. So it really kind of closes the gap uh, between online and in-store. Um, and from a um, sort of business operations perspective, we see a lot of our customers that are now moving to smart glass, the smart glasses, where they can, as they're filling a machine, um, they can actually see that planogram in their glasses using AR. So they see the exact product. They don't have to look it up on a machine. They don't have to look it up on a tablet or a computer. They know that this particular product is supposed to go in this particular spiral because they can see it using the AR. And so they just grab that product and put it where, where it goes in the machine. So it's, it's closing the gap for consumers, but it's also making businesses run more efficiently. So there's a lot of different exciting aspects to how the technology is being rolled out in this space. Are there, is there a part of the smart technology that would tell me if I wanted that product right away and that machine didn't have the product I want, whether it's a candy bar or soda or something like that, what's the closest location that would have the product I'm seeking? Yeah, so we do. We actually have an application that you can download. It's called More. It's actually available in the App Store today. Um, and so you can join that loyalty program and um, based on where you are, um, you can see what machines are around you and what product inventory is in the machines. And so before you go down to the machine that may be closest to you, you know if it has your specific product that you're looking for. If it doesn't, you can find out where it is. Um, and if you are you know, very deal conscious, you can also see if there's any special promotions or discounts on any products on any of the machines that are in close proximity to you as well. Um, so absolutely. I mean, we also can track back to um, the products that are selling based on searches in the app. So if somebody doesn't have a product that keeps coming up as a special request, they can um, certainly uh, accommodate that request for moving forward. How does voice recognition contribute in the unattended retail space? Yeah, so um, there's a, a, a couple of things that we're seeing happening now in the space. Um, Consumers want things quickly, they want things customized, so and they want to be recognized, right? They want there to be a relationship, even if the relationship is with that machine. So um, we have consumers who can interact with our technology on some machines where they'll either be voice recognition or facial recognition. Um, as if, for instance, uh, there's some companies that we work with where you can actually go up to a machine, it recognizes your face, it will ask you if you want the same thing you typically order, just like you might do in an app on a phone. Um, it knows what your last order is, what your preferences are, and so without you having to tap anything, you can go ahead and using your voice, um, confirm that the order is the same as what your typical is, it goes through the order process, and then you pick up your sandwich or food order on the other side. Um, so it offers that very customized experience. The machine knows who I am. It knows what I like, uh, without me having to repeat that order every time I go into the store. In the past, if I went up to a vending machine, I could uh, get my root beer or M&Ms and really nobody would have to know, right? But today, that's, you're collecting a lot of data and you're using a lot of data to help better serve. How are you addressing the privacy concerns that potential users may have? So that's a good question. Um, I think that question comes up a lot, no matter what the technology is. Um, what we're finding is that consumers, as um, hesitant as they may be, or concerned as they may say they are about the privacy issue, they are willing to trade some of that for the convenience that's offered. Um, so certainly you don't have to have the, um, the, the kiosk save your information. Um, but people like that it can do that. And so they're willing to give a little bit for the convenience that's offered. All right. What is next? What can we expect next to come up in the, the unattended retail space? 
Yeah, so, so what's really interesting is that, um, you know, we have all of these legacy machines that are out there right now that are already in the space. So there are 5 million vending machines, 6 million commercial washers and dryers. We have self-serve car wash, amusement games. So just think about, you know, go into a Dave & Buster's or something and you have all of those amusement games there. They're all typically unconnected machines that have the ability to be connected, be smarter, offer customization, offer loyalty programs, um, make the businesses smarter, make sure that they're offering the kinds of products and services that people are looking for. So there's that. And then there's also all of these big box retailers who are looking to extend their brand to where the consumer are. And they're really, at this point, still kind of trying to figure out how to do that. Um, Unattended offers them that ability. So they can now take their brand, Put it basically anywhere with a kiosk or a machine. Um, if you are on a loyalty program with a big box retailer, then that loyalty program would extend to unattended. Um, and I think that it's just going to get increasingly more customized. Almost everything we wind up doing is going to be self-service because that's our preference. We'd rather not talk to people. It's true. Um, and um, some of these new technologies like AI and AI, and AR are only going to, I think, take it to the next level. So for me, um, it, the company that I work for has been around now for close to 20 years. What's really exciting for us is as these legacy markets um, start to engage with and leverage technology, we have all of these other businesses that are now coming in saying, me too. Um, and so I think it's going to become the new norm, to be honest with you. It's a very interesting movement in the retail space, and I'm certainly actually a little bit excited about it. Thanks again for your time, Maeve. If somebody wants to connect with you, how can they go about doing that? Yeah, so feel free to visit um, usatech.com. We're also on Facebook and Twitter under USA Technologies, um, and my email address is mduska at usatech.com. Happy to answer any questions that might come up after this. Of course. And you know, if you want to follow more of my interviews, you can do that right here on ZDNet or Tech Republic. Or if you'd like to connect with me on Facebook or LinkedIn, you can actually go to my website, which is tanyahall.net. And I've got links to all of my social sites or connect with me right now on Twitter at at Radio. I'd love to hear from you. Thanks for watching.